type of love did the human beings have for him, the companions? The men and women who saw him, traveled with him, who heard his recitation of the Quran and prayed behind him. It was a love that caused them to compete over the water that would fall off his body when making wudu ablution. And the one who said this was an enemy of the Prophet Muhammad His name is Urwa ibn Mas'ud al-Thaqafi. Urwa, he saw how the companions behaved with the Prophet when he went to the other side to negotiate with the Muslims. He couldn't believe what he saw. Urwa, after seeing how they behaved, he went back to the pagans. He said to them, they're not gonna hand him over. And let me tell you what I saw. He said, oh my people, I have visited kings before. I have visited myself, the emperor of Rome, the emperor of Persia, and the Abyssinian king. However, by Allah, in my life, I have never seen a community who honor their king more than the honoring of the companions to Prophet Muhammad And then he elaborates upon what he saw. Even the spittle that would come out of his mouth, it would find its way to the hand of a companion who would use it to wipe over his body and wipe over his face. How blessed they were, how lucky they were. Allah has placed barakah in that. And whenever he instructed them to do something, they rushed to fulfill the instruction. And whenever he would do his ablution, it was as if they were on the verge of killing one another, fighting over the remains of the water. And when he spoke, it was silence. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And not one of them would look him straight in the eye because of the awe and the love and the respect that they had for him. Imagine Abu Bakr and Umar and Sa'd ibn Mu'ad and maybe Khalid later on with their heads down, unable to look at the face of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the sheer respect and love. Amr ibn al-As, before he would pass away, he would say, there is nobody on planet Earth who I love more than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet till this day, if you were to ask me to describe him how he looks, I will not be able to give you a description because I couldn't fill my eyes from his beautiful face. Alayhi salatu wasalam. The Battle of Badr. Were the Muslims ready for the Battle of Badr? They had left for travel with basic clothing, basic equipment, just about to hunt an animal. They were not going for war. And all of a sudden, without prior arrangements, it was the Qadr of Allah. They find themselves squaring up to 1,000 men, black to their teeth, with artillery, ready to fight. Abu Jahl and the rest of his team, La ilaha illallah. The Muslims did not want this. And here the Messenger وسلم, carries out a meeting. So he gathered the companions. He said to them, what is your opinion? You see the situation that we're in. Who would be the first to speak? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he would give a beautiful khutbah. We are with you till our last breath. And then Umar Amirul Mu'mineen would stand up and he would speak and gave a beautiful sermon, no less beautiful than Abu Bakr, saying we're with you unconditionally. And then Al-Miqdad ibn Amr would get up and speak. And he said beautiful words that the companions would envy him for. Allah inspired him to say these words because our beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam needed to hear those words. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Proceed to what Allah Almighty has commanded you to do. We are with you. And we will not say to you like the children of Israel said to their prophet Musa, go, you and your Lord fight. We are staying right here. That's what they said to him. He said, we will say to you, go, you and your Lord and fight. We are right behind you fighting. The Messenger وسلم, was happy to hear this. But once again, he said, give me your opinion, O people. What was he waiting for? The opinion of the Ansar. And he had made an agreement with them that if I need help from you, it's within your territory. They're outside of Medina now. So he wants to know if they have his back. This is life and death. They may not go home after this day. And many of them didn't go home. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh recognized what the Messenger وسلم, was hinting at. O Messenger of Allah وسلم, I think you are indicating an opinion from us, the Ansar. O Messenger of Allah, allow me to speak. Because I am Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, I represent the Ansar. And they will not behave or speak before I do. Therefore, allow me to speak on all of their behalf. Messenger of Allah, proceed to what Allah Almighty has commanded you to do. Take from our money as you wish. Leave from our money as you wish. Make ties with whomever you wish. Cut ties with whomever you wish. Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you were to travel to Bark Ghamdan, 500 kilometers away from Medina, a very difficult terrain, we will be right behind you. Rather, if you were to plunge into the sea for war, you will find us right behind you in the middle of the ocean. This was when the Messenger وسلم, became convinced that it is the correct thing to do. And Allah Jalla Jalaluhu would then send the army of the angels to support those believers because they deserved it. Before the battle of Badr erupted, our beloved وسلم, is now, imagine, imagine lining up the lines. And with him was a stick. 
And then he came across a companion called Sawad ibn Ghaziyya. Sawad ibn Ghaziyya had a bit of a belly going on. And so he prodded him because he was stepping a little bit out of line. Istawi ya Sawad. Stand in line, O Sawad. Sawad said, Messenger of Allah, you've hurt me. And Allah Almighty has sent you with truth and justice. So allow me to prod you back. Surely this is not the appropriate time to seek revenge. Leave it until after war, right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Imam of Justice, stood in front of Sawad and he said, yes, of course. And he raised his garment, he said, hug me back. And then Sawad pounced onto the body of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and hugged him very tightly and kissed him in the middle of his torso. He said, Sawad, what made you do that? He said, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you see the situation that we're in. It's likely that we're not going to ever return home to our families. And so I wanted the last thing that I experienced from this life, contact with your blessed body, subhanAllah. These were the men and women who loved the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the battle of Uhud, a woman from the tribe of Dinar, Ibn Hisham narrates, was given the news that her husband had been killed. And she said, what happened to the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They said to her, we are very sorry to tell you that your brother has also been slain. She said, what happened to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They said to her, forgive us for giving you this heavy news on this day, your father has been slain. She said, what happened to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They said, Alhamdulillah, he is well. She said, no, no, point him out. Point him out to me so that I can see him with my own eyes. They said, look over there, can you see him? She looked and then when she saw him, they heard her matter. Every calamity in life is small, so long as you are okay. Father, brother, husband, no husband to go home with that evening. She said, every calamity is small, as long as you are okay. SubhanAllah. After the battle of Uhud had subsided, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Zayd ibn Thabit, go back to the battlefield and look for Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah. We can't find him. And if you meet him, say to him, I say to him, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And so Zayd ibn Thabit, he returns back to the battlefield of Uhud. And he looks for Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah until he finally finds him on the ground, heavily wounded, breathing his last. Zayd ibn Thabit leans down to Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah and he whispers into his ear saying to him, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sent me to you giving you salam and he said how do you feel? Sa'd ibn Rabi'ah with a terribly weak voice responds to Zayd by saying to him return to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the salam from me and O Zayd I would like you to convey a message to my people the Ansar say to my people the Ansar that you have no excuse in front of Allah if any harm touches the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whilst any one of you has an eye that blinks, those were his last words and his blessed soul would return back to Allah Jalla Jalla. That was his farewell message, thinking about his teacher, thinking about the Imam of all Imams, the Messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us and inspire our hearts with true love for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam.